Good morning. I am all dressed and ready to go to the party. Um, so today I'm going to do, it's really like 8.5 from Devil's Fork Gap, which is where I got off. And uh, I'm going to go back to Sam's Gap. And you know what's ironic is I thought I was going to get a bunk when I got here at Nature's Inn Hostel. But I have the same little cabin. Amy put me in the same little cabin when I got off the trail. So uh, this is my test run and hopefully my knee will um, hold up and feel well at the end of the day. I just finished stretching and I'm gonna run up to the main house and uh, um, gobble down a, a small bowl of oatmeal real quick before we hit the road and get started. So let's see what today brings. It's definitely gonna be a beautiful day to hike. It's nice and cool. be a beautiful day. Well, good morning. It is 7.55 a.m. And I am getting back on trail. So if you see right here behind me, this is where I hobbled down um, almost three weeks ago. And um, so we're going to do 8.5. I say we. Um, 8.5 miles today. And uh, up and over. And um, then it's a pretty easy rest of the way once I get this first big descent done. But at least I'm fresh this morning. It's nice and cool this morning, um, which is the way I like to do those larger climbs, if possible, if I can plan it that way. I'm going to go up and over these steps and then through this meadow, through this beautiful meadow, as I head north on the AT. You hear that? Oh. <sighs> what a way to start the day. So I'll add some pictures at the end of the video. But last night here we were able to see the Aurora, Aurora Borealis from the hostel. I never thought that that would happen, but we were, we knew that there was a slight possibility and it was really cloudy. Um, and they, they broke up and the stars came up and about 1030 at night, the sky came to light. And, uh, I will add those pictures at the end of this video, along with my other trail pictures. I'm hoping that that's a good sign that this hike will be able to continue from here on out. And this morning, I am wearing the ankle brace that the doctor gave me. Um, I'm not sure how long I will wear it. He said I could wear it hiking. And while it supports my knee, I also feel like it doesn't give my knee any flexibility of movement. Uh, which tends to kind of make it sore if you think about it um, over long periods of time when I wear it. So I wore it this morning when I got up and um, I will wear it for a little bit, but I have a couple different knee braces in my bag that I can switch out. Here we go. Sam's Gap. 8.5. I thought I'd get on here for just a few minutes 
Thank everybody again for sticking with me while I work through this injury. And, whoo, we're going up right out the gate. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and thank you for coming back. Thank you for sticking with me. And if you're new to my channel, this is, happens to be the first video that you are watching. My name is Julia. My trail name is Time Out. And I am a solo female backpacker in my almost mid fifties. And this is my second attempt of the AT. So last year I made it 115 miles and then uh, went back and did all of Maryland and Pennsylvania. This year I am at mile 311 right now is where I'm at. And back on trail after a respite from a knee issue, a knee strain that I did in the Smokies. And I will be honest, I am not 100%. Um, and after three weeks, I need to decide if it's something that I can hike through um, or if I am gonna have to one, just end this through hike or if I'm just gonna have to reevaluate how I'm gonna hike the AT, either by section hiking or whatever that picture looks like. Today is a really important day because of that, because this is my test run. I have been off trail for almost three weeks and uh, yeah, it's D-Day, this is it. So eight and a half miles, which is really the shortest that I could do in this section to test it out. And other than this first big climb, uh, it shouldn't be too terrible than 8.5. Um, and actually I could have gone south for this slack pack, um, but the last three miles would have been down. And before I got off trail, the downs were impacting my knee more than the ups. So I figure if I'm gonna have more of one or the other, I'm gonna have more up than down. And I never thought I would say that in my life. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, wow. so here I am, Devil's Fork Gap. So this is interesting, I just turn the camera and show you this. The trail comes up from there and you can see the white place over on your right, right there. And so I just came up that way. Now you do have this road right here and then this fencing. So what appears that you would think that might be the way the trail goes, you are going to go through this fencing and hop over this, which keeps the animals out of this section. But when you get short legs, get my leg up over, that's pretty tough. And the reason why I know that is because I looked ahead and I was able to um, see the white blaze right here on this tree. So I knew that I needed to go through that. So, you know, just uh, just to, just to be cautious, you know, when you get to those slow down, take a second and think about the choice that you're making in the moment. Uh, because, you know, you don't want to walk a mile out of your way and then have to turn around and fix that problem. Um, so just take a few seconds and just make sure. Check far out. Check your compass. Check your map. Look for the blazes, and if you ever don't see, just a tip, if there's ever a time that you don't see a blaze in front of you, turn around and look behind you, because there have been countless times where I couldn't see a blaze. I turned around in the other direction, and there was one on the tree um, going in the other direction. That just happens, but look at how beautiful this is.
it just came out from there. And there's a sign here that says Laurel Hostel that way. I don't know that I've ever heard of that. Oh, if anybody's stayed there, heard of it, I'll look it up when I get back later, but let me know. But we're going to go. This is actually a beautiful part of trail, let me tell you. Beautiful. I mean, it's just maintained well. Um, I'm going to film while I'm going across this, which you all know is not my strong, strong suit. Uh, a little bit wider would be nice in my opinion, but <laughs> that's okay. One step at a time. <sighs> Man, I don't know if that'll ever get easier. But I mean, this is just, this is a beautiful section of trail. I highly recommend this so far. And I, I did the other side of it. Um, coming from Flint Mountain Shelter when I got off, which is beautiful. And now I'm doing the other side of it. And I mean, there's hostels not that far away. You know, you have Nature's Inn where I'm staying at Laurel Hostel. I have to look up. But I mean, even as just a, a section, stay at a hostel and come do some day hikes. You know, beautiful. Get out, some fresh air, drink a lot of water, get some exercise. Get off the screens. Improves your eyesight. You know. It's the Japanese call it forest bathing. You know I've made reference to that before in my videos. But right now, I am bathing in the forest. All right, so I ditched the alpaca already. I probably should have wore shorts. But I didn't. I was gonna bring them, and I didn't. But it'll be okay. Um, it's always okay. It's not like I got fleece. It's not like I got fleece-lined hiking pants on. They're my thin ones. So I'll be fine. But I ditched the knee brace. I just feel like that knee brace is trying to keep my knee rigid in one position while I'm walking. So I feel like while well, I need the support at some times, I feel like when you're walking eight or nine miles to keep your knee in like one rigid position for that long, it was causing a little bit of pain. But uh, yeah, and you know what's so weird is that like, and I know it's from driving, that calf is just tied so tight. No matter what I do, I just can't get that calf muscle to, and tendons to loosen up. And of course, driving did not help. But I can almost bet that that's causing knee issues. Damn it, it's so frustrating. It's frustrating when your body won't do what you want it to do. That being said, y'all, whenever I see the younger people out here and they tell me that their, you know, parents kind of think they might be a little nuts for doing this or taking a gap year. Smartest thing you can ever do. I finished this thought because now I am on the incline. But the smartest thing you can do is do something out of the ordinary before you get into real life. Because when you get to be my age, it's not as easy. Your body, no matter what, cannot always do what it needs to do in the way that it needs to do it when you're 20 or 30 years younger. I know my audience is mostly 45 plus, but I'm speaking to the 45 plus too. that have kids and grandkids and they come to you and they say they wanna do something a little bit out of the ordinary. Educate yourself, maybe go do it and test it out and then support them because something like this it doesn't have to be a through hike, but something in life that's out of the ordinary, they will carry that with them till the day that they die. And it, a lot of times, will change them in a wonderful way and make them better people going forward. I do 
That's my two cents for the day. So I just stumbled across this. So Trayana was like, okay, this is all like fenced off. And I just saw the, oh, she's not the only one here. Um, but Dorothy, it looks like Plensley, I think, or it looks like, or Piensley. She was 100 years old, May 1865 to April of 1965. Wow, that's so awesome. 100 years old. This one is Joe Riddle. May of 1871 to, I can't see the month, 1961 maybe, 90 years old. Holy crap. Hmm. And uh, they rest in peace in these beautiful woods with the sound of the creek. This is just so pretty right here. Look at this the waterfall. I'm just walking along this creek bed as I'm climbing up. Whoops, sorry about that. It's this waterfall right here. But, man, everything's just so green. And I always feel like in the spring, it's a brighter green because it's new. It's new, but and it's just so bright. It's so weird because I'm so used to being able to see so far, which I love, but I also love the green. And, you know, but with that, you know, you, the poison ivy coming out, and poison oak and all those things. Yeah. All right, again. And the ticks. And uh, it wasn't... That wasn't really a concern a while ago. And ah, uh, it's part of trail life. All right. Still climbing. Be climbing for a couple hours. Guessing I'm gonna get my feet a little bit wet right here. And that's even coming over around the sides, but that's all the rain that they got up here in Tennessee. So I'll go right through there. It won't be too bad. I'll dry out, but yeah, look at how pretty that is. Fresh water. I can't complain about my backdrop today. All the rains that have come and just the waters are just rushing everywhere. Beautiful sounds. The birds are chirping. And if my feet get a little bit wet and muddy, it's well worth it. This is quite pretty right here. This is the trail. Definitely be doing a tick check tonight. Been walking in water this today. But I just look how I bet this is just magnificent in the fall because that mountain right there is every color, every call color, color, I'm sure. But I can see the layers of mountains in the distance. How beautiful. Here, take a few seconds out of your day to just enjoy creation.
So you know that feeling when you get, when you are, haven't eaten all day and you go and you stop in the grocery store to get a few things, or I know Costco, I think Sam's Club is notorious for this, but you go in, you're starving and you got the people, the people that have the like samples of food. So you go in and you go shopping, you know, you're starving and you know, you get, Get a little piece of a sub sandwich here and maybe two potato chips here and maybe a, a fresh raspberry here and you're just so elated you're like because i was starving and it just made that shopping experience so much more enjoyable so i just walked past this couple and their baby in the carrier dad was carrying a young couple and they're locals obviously it's saturday they're just on a day hike out with their baby yeah they stop me and they're like, would you like a hot dog or a hamburger? <laughs> and uh, I was like, I said, no, thank you. Cause I'm slack packing. And you know, there's two young guys behind me. Yeah. I'm like, feed the, feed the ones that are staying out here for days. But it made me think about that when you're like, when you go to the grocery store and you're like starving and you have all the samples of food and it just makes your shopping experience, you're just so happy. And those it's and you're not getting a whole meal in there, but and it's like it's gotta feel it feels like that. You know, you're out here in the woods, you've been out here for three or four days, eating your dehydrated junk or your ramen, you know, or every bar that they've ever made. And somebody walks past you right here, just like this, and says, Would you like a hot dog or a hamburger? And <laughs> And I mean, when they first said that, I was like, yeah, that, I mean, if I had been out here for days, I would have been like so happy. Um, but I wanted them to save them for some, some, some of these people that have been out here for some of these hikers that have been out here for a few days. I don't know. Just another one of my weird, random comparison thoughts that I have while walking in the woods. So here's um, the path to Hogback Ridge Shelter. 2.4 miles to Sam's Gap. I'm just gonna have a quick chicken pouch and I packed out a little Dr. Pepper. And uh, so I have come 6.1 miles from this morning um, in about four hours. So that's pretty good, a little over four hours, four hours and 20 minutes, that's pretty good. Um, and we got 2.4 to go, so I'm gonna eat a quick lunch. All right, so this is Hogback Ridge Shelter. This is actually really very nice um, shelter in here. And the water is down there. It, I've heard it's quite a trek to get down there. So if you can carry it in, you might want to. Um, but otherwise, it is here. Picnic table, super nice and level and solid. Fire ring right there. Um, the path to the privy is right there. There's bear cables right there. And yeah, it's not that far. I decided to come back here and have lunch. I'm really glad that I did. Um, Cause I ran into Pacer and she maintains this section of the trail. This is all, look at the wonderful tent camping area here. It's fantastic. I mean, there's cut pieces of log to sit on everywhere. It's just fantastic. That's beautiful. That is beautiful for a tent. And even hammocks. I mean, there's, I don't have a hammock, but there's more tent spots up there. I mean, there's just, yeah, this is really, really, really nice um, uh, shelter area here for sure. So my, my, uh, my buff, my bandana is slipping all around. Um, but anyhow, so I, uh, yeah, I was coming down the path to go to the shelter and um, yeah, I ran into the trail maintainer and she maintains a three mile section. So from the, the shelter here um, and another half a mile and then down to Sam's Gap. So she had just finished uh, checking on the shelter here and it was so funny because we like, I'm like, I know you and she's like I know you and she, we're like trying to figure out 
naming all these places that we've hiked and she hiked the AT um, last year. So we were trying to figure out like when I started and when she come to find out halfway through our conversation, we were chit chatting. When I went to the Southern Rock in January in Irwin, she bunked right next to me um, and had just bought a Durston. I had just uh, kind of got comfortable with setting up mine. And so she brought her Durston. So we went out and set up our Durstons together to, to practice. <coughs> but it's just so funny because it's just such a small world. Um, even when you're out here in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in the woods and you actually run into somebody that you know, it's just crazy. There's a couple little lady slippers alongside the trail. Sam's Gap. Walking sticks if anybody needs them. I love that people leave them there. Mm. It's noisy. 